show that the only thing that is growing is people's, um, people's debt, people's energy bills, and, um, sorry? Oh, keep going, keep going. Order, 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 order! I think the Honourable Lady's probably got the message that she's taking too long, but I can't blame only the Honourable Lady because lots of people have taken too long. I've been quite lenient because we've got plenty of time today, but, you know, there's still a question of courtesy to the House. I hope the Honourable Lady will just put her question now, please. Absolutely nothing for the majority of people in the real economic... Order! Order! When I politely asked the Honourable Lady to just put her question, can't she just put her question? Has she put it? Because I didn't hear it. It wasn't clear what the question uh, was, but if she's suggesting that we haven't helped people with this growth plan, I would just uh, gently remind her that the energy intervention helps nearly everybody. The reversal of the national insurance increase helps 28 million people and gives them £330 a year, and the accelerating the cut, uh, the 1p cut in the basic rate, also gives uh, £300 a year uh, to the average worker. These are substantial benefits, which I'm sure our constituents will appreciate. Well Helen Morgan. Mm. Thank you, Madam De Deputy Speaker. I think today's statement has shown that the Conservative Government is out of touch with rural Britain. The Rural Services Network have said that people in rural areas face significantly higher costs partly due to being reliant on private transport and partly, as we discussed in the House, on uh, off-grid heating, and that they earn much less than their urban counterparts. So can the Chancellor explain to me how today's budget will help people living in rural areas? I think she does well to raise this issue, because clearly uh, people uh, affected uh, who, who, who benefit from a limit to the price of electricity aren't cover, don't cover uh, people in rural areas who are off the grid, and that's why uh, my right honourable friend, the Business Secretary, has announced uh, some measure of support. And there are, we're also looking at other ways uh, that we can we can help uh, people in, in the way uh, that she's described. Peter Grant. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. I'm very proud of the fact that Glengorthis was the first town in any of our four nations to be recognised by the Living Wage Foundation for its progress towards becoming a living wage town. That's a proper living wage, not the Chancellor's pretended kiddy on one. The Living Wage Foundation have recently confirmed that the proper living wage needs to increase by over 10% just for people to stand still. Now, I know that Fife Council, other public bodies and the many private businesses that act as their suppliers are very keen to continue to pay that fair living wage to all of their workers. So will the Chancellor confirm today that the budget, the public spending budget, will guarantee adequate funding so that responsible public sector employers can continue to play, mm. pay a fair wage to essential workers, or does it expect key workers to survive one round of applause for another 12 months? Yeah. We've made uh, lots of progress in terms of the fair wage. Also, I might add that the uh, mi uh, national li uh, minimum wage is something that we've uh, increased, and we've always uh, sought to protect the most vulnerable in our society. Kirsty Black. The Chancellor seems to believe that there are two fundamentally different groups of people in these islands, two classes, if you will. Why does he believe? that those earning megabucks will be incentivised by increasing their already excessive wealth, while those who have had to skip meals during the course of the summer in order to survive will be incentivised by having that paltry amount reduced even further. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's a complete misrepresentation or willful misunderstanding of our position. What we've done in the growth plan is protect uh, millions and millions of vulnerable people. We've allowed them to keep more of their own money. I know she's not necessarily in favour of that. And we want to drive growth and entrepreneurialism in our uh, economy. And finally, the prize for perseverance and patience goes to Ian Byrne. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. We have a budget for the 1% by a grim, bankrupt and Thatcherite Tribute Act. One in three in my great city are in food poverty now. I have constituents unable to put the heating on, take a hot shower, put a meal on the table. At the current levels, which was mentioned before, double from January, this does absolutely nothing for them. 
So will the Chancellor actually focus on the people who are facing this humanitarian disaster across all our communities, instead of playing to the rich bankers who, bank who bankrolled his party? And will he sit down and meet with me and discuss how a right to food would yeah, right yeah. some of these wrongs in society? Yeah, yeah. excellent. Chancellor of the Exchequer. I'm always, uh, as a minister, I've always been open to colleagues uh, on both sides of the houses. People have uh, spoken to me. I sometimes, regrettably, have uh, some of my conversations leaked to the press. Um, but I'd be happy to speak to him on an issue of concern to his constituents. Thank you. In a moment, I will call the Chancellor of the Exchequer to move the provisional collection of taxes motion. Copies of the motion are available in the vote office. In accordance with Standing Order No. 51-2 on Ways and Means Motions, a Minister of the Crown may, without notice, make a motion for giving provisional statutory effect to any proposals in pursuance of Section 5 of the Provisional Collection of Taxes Act 1968. And the question on such a motion shall be put forthwith. I call the Chancellor of the Exchequer to move the provisional collection of taxes motion formally. Move formally. The question is the motion on stamp duty land tax reduction as set out in the provisional collection of taxes motion. As may as that opinion say aye. Aye. Of the contrary, no. I think the ayes have it. The ayes have it. Thank you. That concludes proceedings on the Chancellor's statement. Thank you. Well done. Well done. I now call Kate Knifton with her petition. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. I rise to present a petition recognising Burton's brewing industry as of national cultural importance and that the recent decision of Molson Coors to move their head offices to the National Brewery Centre puts Burton's heritage items at risk. This issue has rightly gathered national attention, with recent online campaigning gaining thousands of supporters and national news coverage highlighting the importance of our brewing heritage. Whilst I am grateful for Molson Coors' ongoing commitment to Burton,